What were the best projects and learning opportunities from your PhD at Stanford? One of the things that occurred to me, these groups would organize themselves. And it always seemed to me the leader of the group was not necessarily the A student or the top student in the group. It was often maybe a good B student. In other words, and I, I often wondered if there wasn't a message there. A students make great followers. Are they the innovators? Why do you think that was? <laughs> well, I suspect it's because if you're getting A's in course material, it means you're following the professor very well. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're being creative or original. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be the leader of a group developing a new product, what you want is creativity and originality. And getting A's doesn't necessarily indicate that you have that skill. I find that very encouraging because uh, <laughs> I don't have all those A's. So make up for your lack of following with originality and creativity. <laughs> So your success with the 4004 and the 8008 are well documented, but I want to know about other projects at Intel um, where you, or other companies where you experienced any difficulty or setbacks and what did you take away from those projects? Well, even the development of the 4004 wasn't without its setbacks. When I first began to propose the concept of a simple little computer to do the job of the chipset that had been brought to us from Japan, it was rejected by the Japanese engineers. They wanted no part of it. It was only with Bob Noyce's encouragement that I pursued the, the concepts and developed what eventually became the architecture for the 4004. So that took that took some support and some, you might say, self-confidence to argue even to Bob. What I'm doing here, I think, is worth pursuing. Do you have any perspective or advice for the next generation of computer architects or engineers, especially any lessons about work, resilience, or failure? Well, uh, there's probably a couple of things I could say. One is, you know, some people said, weren't you just lucky that you were at the right place at the right time? And my answer is, if you're interested in technology, do everything you can to get yourself in the right place at the right time. I mean, Silicon Valley here is a tremendous area with lots of things going on, and you learn as much about what's going on and find an area where you think you can really help and make a contribution, and it's very likely you will be able to and you can be successful at it. The other thing is learn as much as you can so when you speak, you can speak with authority, that you can back up your opinions with facts. That's very useful and is very important in being able to make a sales pitch for your ideas. 